In this lecture, you'll learn about ONTAP upgrades. I'll cover where to find the documentation you should check before doing the upgrade. We'll also look at the manual checks that you should do before the upgrade, how to actually perform the upgrade, and we'll go into some of the caveats about whether the process is going to be disruptive or not. Doing an upgrade is obviously a fairly major process on your storage system. So you want to make sure that you've got everything lined up before you go ahead and do that. You want to check all of the relevant documentation. First thing you should do is use Upgrade Advisor in Active IQ to generate an upgrade plan. That is documentation in either PDF or Excel format that takes you through step by step the upgrade process for your particular system. Also check the release notes for the version of ONTAP that you're upgrading to. There's also the Upgrade Express Guide and the Upgrade and Revert Downgrade Guides, which are also PDFs. The recommended way of doing the upgrade is using ANDU. That's the Automatic Non-Disruptive Upgrade. When you use NDU, it uses a wizard in System Manager and most of the process is done automatically for you. So it's a very easy way to do it. When you are using ANDU, there's some manual checks that you should do first. So ANDU does automate most of the process for you, but there are a few things that you need to check manually first. The things that you do need to check are documented in that upgrade plan from Upgrade Advisor, and you can also find them in the Express Guide PDF as well. The things that you need to do are review the release notes for the new ONTAP version, check there's not any issues in there which would be relevant to your particular environment. Also confirm that the hardware platform you're using is supported. If you're using an older hardware platform, it's possible that there's a certain version of ONTAP that it will support up to, but not the latest versions. So check you do have a supported platform. Also, the switches that you're using, the cluster switch, also your network switches, check that they are supported and you're using the correct configuration on there. Confirm any SAN components. If you're using SAN protocols on your system, make sure that the clients are using a supported operating system. So the client operating system is supported in this new version of ONTAP that you're going to upgrade to, not just the old one. Also check that the host utilities version that you've got on the clients, again, is compatible with the version of ONTAP you want to upgrade to. You might need to upgrade the host utilities version as well as upgrading ONTAP. Not finished yet, some more. Verify you can upgrade to the target on tap version from the current version. You may need to stage the upgrade. For example, if you're currently on on tap version 9.2 and you want to upgrade to version 9.4, it's not possible to go straight from 9.2 to 9.4. You would have to upgrade from 9.2 to 9.3 first, and then from 9.3, you can then upgrade to 9.4. Verify the cluster does not exceed system limits for your platform. So for example, make sure you don't have any too many snapshots on there. Verify that the CPU and disk utilization is below 50%. When you do an upgrade, it uses high availability because if you think about it, obviously to upgrade to a new version, it's going to require a reboot. If you're currently on version 9.3 and you want to go to 9.4, 9.4 will be installed on the node. It then reboots and comes up with version 9.4. Also, while the upgrade is taking place, the storage has to fail over to the HA peer. So when you're doing the upgrade, during the upgrade, because one of the nodes will be down, the other node is taking care of all the storage. So it's doing double the normal work. So because of that, you don't want your CPU or disk utilization to be above 50%, because if it does, it's going to put too much load on that HA partner while it's doing all of the work. Other things, suspend any jobs such as snap mirror or backups until after the upgrade is complete. And lastly, download the ONTAP software image from the NetApp website 
and copy it to an HTTP or FTP server where it's then going to be downloaded from there onto the actual storage system. Now, starting in on tap 9.4, you don't have to use that external HTTP or FTP server. You can actually download the software image to your laptop, and from your laptop, you can copy it directly to the storage system from there. But that's just from version 9.4. Okay, so said earlier that the way we're normally going to do the upgrade is using ANDU, the Automatic Non-Disruptive Upgrade. And that uses a wizard in the System Manager GUI. There's three stages as you go through the wizard. The first stage is select. When you're at the select stage, the ONTAP software image is uploaded to the cluster by the administrator and selected. So you've already gone to the NetApp website, You've downloaded the new ONTAP software image. You then copy that to an HTTP or FTP server. In the first stage in the wizard, it's going to be uploaded from the HTTP or FTP server to the NetApp storage system. And in the wizard, you say, this is the version of ONTAP that I want to upgrade to. You then click next in the wizard. And the next stage is the validate stage. At this stage, the system manager wizard automatically validates cluster health to verify that the cluster is ready to be updated. So it does a load of checks on the system to make sure that everything is good on the system, that there's no issues there. Because if you think about it, if there's issues on your cluster, you don't want to be trying to upgrade it at that time. So when you're using the wizard, if it doesn't pass the validate stage, it won't let you move on to try to do the upgrade. It gives you a full report of what the issues are, tells you the remedial action that you need to take. You then go and fix those issues. You can then come back and try the upgrade again. Finally, when it has passed the validate stage, the last stage is upgrade where the upgrade is actually performed. So using ANDU, it's a very simple wizard, just three steps, which are basically next, 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 and then the system will do most of the work for you. So it makes upgrade very simple. But you'll see how to do that in the next lecture. There's two type of upgrades that can be performed, either a rolling upgrade or a batch upgrade. With a rolling upgrade, each node is upgraded one at a time. So when a node is being upgraded, it is taken offline and it's upgraded. While that is happening, its HA partner has taken over its storage. Once the new version of ONTAP has been put on that node, it then reboots with the new version and takes control of its storage back. That is then repeated on the partner node and then each HA pair is upgraded like this one at a time in sequence until it's all done. It takes around about half an hour or so for each node to be upgraded. The other way to do it is the batch upgrade. With a batch upgrade, the cluster is split into two batches of multiple HA pairs. Half of the nodes are upgraded at the same time in the first batch, and then their partners, and then that is repeated on the second batch. So it's actually split into four parts. So there's two batches, half of the first batch is upgraded first, and then the second half of the first batch. Then half of the second batch, and then the second half of the second batch. The batch upgrade is only supported on clusters of eight or more nodes, but when you do have eight or more nodes, it means that the upgrade is going to be completed more quickly than if you were doing a rolling upgrade. So if that didn't quite make sense, let's have a look at that with a diagram. So the first type was a rolling upgrade. Rolling upgrade is one at a time. So you see our example here, we've got an eight node cluster, which is made up of four HA pairs. We upgrade node one, well that is happening. Node two, its HA peer, is gonna take control of its storage. When node one is done, then node two will get done. While well, node two is being upgraded, node one will take care of its storage. And then when node two is completed, nodes one and two are back to normal. We then do that on node three, node four, node five, node six, node seven, and node eight. So the rolling upgrade, one at a time. Looking at a batch upgrade now, we've got the same cluster here made up of eight nodes, four HA pairs again, but it's been split into two different batches. So first off, node one and node three are upgraded at the same time. Obviously, we wouldn't do node one and node two, 
because they're the HAPers for each other. So when node one is being upgraded, we need node two to be online and taking care of its storage. So we do node one and node three first, we do them at the same time. Then when they're done, we then do nodes two and four, their HA partners. Then we do nodes five and seven over in batch two. And then finally nodes six and eight. So if you saw when we were doing a rolling upgrade, we did them one at a time. We've got eight nodes, takes about half an hour per node. So that would take about four hours to do the upgrade. When we use a batch upgrade, that time is cut in half when we've got eight nodes, it would only take about two hours. So that's the benefit of using a batch upgrade. It cuts down the amount of time that the upgrade takes. Okay, moving on. So said earlier, the ANDU is the recommended upgrade method that is using the wizard in system manager, but that is not supported if you're using Metro cluster. If you're using Metro cluster, you have to do a manual upgrade. That uses a rolling upgrade, so the nodes are upgraded one at a time, and that's performed by you at the command line. And validation of cluster health is performed manually prior to the upgrade. So you don't get that automated validation process done for you by system manager. So that does verify a lot of things about the cluster, so it's a bit more involved when you're doing a manual upgrade. Those pre-upgrade checks are going to take you a while, because you are expected to enter all of those commands at the command line to check that the cluster is healthy. All of the commands that you do have to enter and the entire process are documented in the Upgrade and Revert Download Downgrade Guide, which you can get from the NetApp website. Okay, single node clusters. As you saw earlier, the way that the upgrade works is that each node, one node of an HA pair is done at a time, while it is being upgraded, its HA partner takes ownership of its storage. And this allows us to have a non-disruptive upgrade. The cluster is a whole and all of the storage on there is still available to clients while you do the upgrade. There are some caveats to that that I'll get to in a minute, but as long as you've got at least two nodes in the cluster, you can do that. Now, obviously a single node cluster is not going to be non-disruptive because it doesn't have an HA partner that it can fail over to. So if you've got a single node cluster, while that single node is offline because it's up being upgraded, obviously your data is not going to be available to clients. Okay, so let's talk about those caveats about whether this is going to be disruptive or not. Because even though it's called an automatic non-disruptive upgrade, there is some situations where it can actually cause some disruption, mostly if you're using SIFs in your environment. So stateless protocols do not constantly maintain the state of their connection to the server. So for stateless protocols, we're not going to have an issue during the upgrade. If there is a temporary break in connectivity between the client and the server, so that's your client, the server is a storage system here in this case, any operation in progress will be completed when connectivity is restored. The session will go down if no communication is possible between client and server for a certain period of time, which is a timeout period. So if you've got a temporary break in connectivity, which is less than the timeout, then there's no issues. It's only if that break in connectivity lasts so long that it reaches the timeout period that the connection is then going to be torn down. So for our storage, stateless protocols such as NFS version 3, Fibre Channel and iSCSI are going to be less susceptible to service interruptions during the upgrade than session-oriented protocols such as SIFS. Yeah, so NFS v3, Fibre Channel and iSCSI are stateless. There is no disruption to the client if it's using those protocols if the timeout is greater than any disruption period on the cluster. For example, the amount of time that an HA give back takes. So stateless protocols, normally they will be non-disruptive. You're not going to have issues there. But there's also stateful protocols. Stateful protocols maintain the session constantly. They do not have a timeout. So with stateful protocols, you need to direct users to end their sessions before you do an upgrade of a NetApp system. SIFS is a stateful protocol. So if services are disrupted, 
the state information about any operation in progress is lost and the user must restart the operation. So when you're doing the upgrade, there's going to be a failover to the HA partner and then there's going to be a give back when it's completed. That does cause a short outage, but it's long enough to cause problems with your SIFS sessions. So if you are using the SIFS protocol and you're going to do an upgrade, highly recommended that you want to do this in a maintenance window when you don't have any clients connecting into the storage system. Now, NFS v4 is also a stateful protocol, but it can handle this a bit better than SIFS. The clients will automatically recover from upgrade connection losses. If you've got any applications running that are stateful, the effect on them depends on the particular application. And it depends on the timeout of that application. If the timeout on the application is longer than any of those short disruptions on the storage system, there's not going to be a problem. But if the timeout is shorter, then it will cause a problem with that application. So in that case, check if it's possible to make the timeout on the application longer so it's not going to be disrupted. Okay, last thing to cover is about our firmware on the system. So we've got system firmware, we've got the motherboard, disk, and also disk shelf firmware. The latest system disk and disk shell firmware is bundled with the ONTAP upgrade packages. So when you download your new version of ONTAP, that doesn't just include the operating system, it includes the firmware as well, all in the one file. So upgrading ONTAP also upgrades your firmware non-disruptively at the same time. When new disks or shelves are then added, their firmware is automatically upgraded to the current version on the storage system. So if you buy a new disk and the firmware on there is older than what is on your system, it will be automatically updated when you add that disk. The same with shelves as well. So your firmware is automatically updated when you do an on-tap upgrade. You can also upgrade it manually in between on-tap upgrades. So for example, if there was a, a bug on your particular model of disk and there was a fix for that with a firmware update, then you would want to do that firmware update. And last thing is DQP, which is Disk Qualification Package. Only approved, which are known as qualified disks, are supported in NetApp systems. So when a new disk is added, it is checked against the disk qualification package. So you have to buy official approved disks by NetApp. The DQP is not updated as part of an on ONTAP upgrade, unlike your disk firmware. So you need to download and install the latest DQP before you add a new drive type or size, which is not already on the system, or if you're going to upgrade to a new version of ONTAP, or if you're going to update the disk firmware. So before you do your ONTAP upgrade, upgrade the DQP first. It's really easy to do that. Just look on the NetApp website, you download the file, put a couple of commands in at the command line and you're done. You can then do your main on top upgrade using the system manager wizard. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next lecture for an actual demo of how to do this. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands-on practice with NetApp storage, you can download my free How to Build a NetApp Lab for Free ebook. It's got full step-by-step -step instructions on how to build a complete NetApp Lab, and best of all, you can run it all for free on your laptop. And if you want to get my complete NetApp course, which covers everything you need to know about NetApp storage, you can check out the other video that you can see here too. Thanks.